Riots, protests, uprisings, they've all shaped the United States through history and got us to where we are today as a country. But is there a double standard when it comes to the American riot? That's the question posed by Kelly Carter Jackson's piece in The Atlantic. Nationwide protests against police killings have been called un-American by critics, but rebellion has always been used to defend liberty. Joining me now, Kelly Carter Jackson, assistant professor of Africana Studies at Wellesley College, historian and author of Force and Freedom, Black Abolitionists and the Politics of Violence. Uh, Kelly, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. I want to quote from your story in The Atlantic, in which you say, riots have a way of magnifying not merely the flaws in the system, but also also the strength of those in power. The American Revolution was one with violence. The French Revolution was one with violence. The Haitian Revolution was one with violence. The Civil War was one with violence. A revolution in today's terms would mean that these nationwide rebellions lead to black people being able to access and exercise the fullness of their freedom and humanity. Tell me what you mean by that. So I think that when I'm in a classroom with my students and I talk to them about major change in history. I say, look at a historical timeline. Look at the pinpoints. Every single major moment in American history has pivoted around some form of force or violence. So if we're looking at the American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, the Civil War, World War I or II, Vietnam, post 9-11, all of these moments involve some form of violence or some form of force to create systemic or structural change. Uh, there's a NBC Marist poll that came out where, in which it asked Americans, do you think the demonstrations after George, George Floyd's death are? And these are the options. 62% said legitimate protest. 28% said mostly people acting unlawfully. Lawfully, and 10% said unsure. How do we distinguish? How do you distinguish? I, I understand the point you're making that this country and many countries were built on violent protest against illegitimate government or a lack of freedom. Do you then distinguish between protests that become violent versus what some would qu classify as looters or, or, or people who uh, engage in deliberate violence? Well, sure. I think that what we have to realize is that in America, we've had um, an intense double standard, particularly when it comes to black protesters. So when we think of like Michigan State winning a game and the city gets turned upside down, Michigan State losing a game and the city gets turned upside down. But I think that, you know, when we look at black protesters and when there are facets of looting or violence, we make that the center instead of talking about the real grievance, which is the fact that a man is dead, that George Floyd is no longer with us. Breonna Taylor is no longer with us. She would have been 27 as of yesterday. Ahmaud Arbery is no longer with us. So I push back on this idea a lot because I ask people what's more important, the destruction of capital, the destruction of businesses, or the destruction of black bodies and black communities? I think we have our priorities wrong when we pose that question. How do we change that? How do people recalibrate their priorities? Because they think what they think, right? Uh, uh, Philadelphia Inquirer uh, senior journalist uh, has been relieved of his job after putting a title on a, a story that said uh, buildings matter too or something like that in, in response to Black Lives Matter. Yeah, that's a real problem for me. And it's something that I'm constantly having to reorient people to understand the major grievances. Martin Luther King said it best, a riot is the language of the unheard. And I think if we're unwilling to listen to the grievances of black communities and people who are in pain and people who are devastated by the fact that hundreds of people have been killed unarmed by the police. If we don't focus on that and make that the major issue in the center of the narrative, narrative we will lose um, what's really important about these protests and what's at the heart of these protests. Riot is the language of the unheard. Kelly Carter Jackson is an historian and the author of Force and Freedom, Black Abolitionists, The Politics of Violence. Thank you, uh, Kelly. Good to see you.